Good morning. Welcome to worship this morning. Uh, it's good to have you in person. Thank, invite, and thankful to have those who are worshiping with us online. I was uh, standing outside briefly before worship started, and I went out there to drink my coffee, you know. And I noticed four cars lined up to turn into the parking lot at the same time. And I remember standing out there last summer begging for four cars in total. <laughs> and so that, that got me very excited to see cars having to wait behind other cars to turn into our parking lot. So we'll, we'll pray for more of that in the near future. It's good to see you this morning. Thankful that you've joined us for worship. I invite you to stand for confession. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for you and for God's sake, for his sake, God forgives us all our sin. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's sing our gathering hymn.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Let us pray. Creator God, you prepare a new way in the wilderness, and your grace waters our desert. Open our hearts to be transformed by the new thing you are doing, that our lives may proclaim the extravagance of your love given to all through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. The psalm for today is Psalm 126, and we will read it responsively. When the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, then were we like those who dream. The Lord has done great things for us, and we are glad indeed. Those who sowed with tears will reap with songs of joy. to worship. I invite the children to come forward. Hi, Shalom. Thank you for being here. And hi to all of the children at home as well. Can you smell that? Can you smell that smell? Anybody else smell it from where you are? Dave was commenting, Pastor Dave was commenting, he goes, that, that popcorn is getting to me. It reminds me of... Albert Lee, and Albert Lee was a place where, where Pastor Dave grew up. And so, would you remind? What did it remind you of? Basketball, game. basketball games. Does popcorn remind any of you? Does this remind you of anything? Anyone else out there? Popcorn. Shout it out. Movies. I think of children's parties because we would have popcorn. The kids would have popcorn when they had their friends over. So I think of parties and movies. Well, today's um, Bible story is about a party. Do you like parties? Have you been to a party? It's about a party that Jesus was invited to, and he was the guest of honor. Have you ever been to a party that honored somebody? Jesus was honored at this party because he did something truly amazing. He raised a man from the dead. A man who had been in the grave for four whole days. Jesus called out to Lazarus and said, come out, come out of the grave. And he did. He was alive. And so Lazarus and his sisters threw a party for Jesus, to honor Jesus and to give thanks. And to... Well, as they were gathered, one of the sisters took some perfume. And I might, do I have it over there? I don't know if I brought it with me. Um, 
took some perfume called nard and poured it on Jesus' feet. You don't need to open it. It's pretty strong. It might... Yeah, I'm not sure if it's a better smell or not. It's a good smell, but with people with allergies, I always worry a little bit. But there is some nard. If you want to smell it after church, you sure may, if you don't have any allergies. Um, But she poured that oil on Jesus' feet and wiped his feet. It said in the Bible that that smell filled the house. Can you imagine that smell of perfume? filling the house, kind of like popcorn filling our sense. And it was a good smell because it reminded them of life. And you know what? I was thinking about that, and I was thinking, what things remind us of life? Can you think of some things that remind you of life? Besides parties? Are there other things? Gardenias. Those are my mom's favorite, too. I love gardenias. We had some in our wedding. They remind me of new life. Thank you. Other memories of new life. Sunshine. Rain. Any other good reminders? I think right here, whenever I pass a baptismal font, I think of new life. Whenever we celebrate the Lord's Supper, I think of new life. And celebrate. And the promise that Jesus said, one day we will celebrate that new life with him in a big, big party that he throws for us. Isn't that exciting? Let's pray as we celebrate God's gift to us. Dear Jesus, thank you for your love and forgiveness. And most of all, thank you for new life. We look forward with joy to the celebration that you promise us. Amen. Thank you. gospel according to John the 12th chapter. Six days before the Passover, Jesus came to Bethany, the home of Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. There they gave a dinner for him. Martha served and Lazarus was one of those at the table with him. And Mary took a pound of costly perfume made of pure nard. And she anointed Jesus' feet and wiped them with her hair. The house was filled with the fragrance of perfume. But Judas Iscariot, one of the disciples, the one who was about to betray him, said, Why was this perfume not sold for 300 denarii and the money given to the poor? He said this not because he cared about the poor, but because he was a thief. He kept the common purse and used to steal what was put into it. And Jesus said to him, You always have the poor with you, but you do not always have me. Leave her alone. Word of God, word of life. You may be seated. Grace to you and peace from our triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Today's text from John brought to memory one of my favorite comic strips from Kelvin and Hobbes. 
Calvin is knee deep in the dirt. And Hobbes asks him, why are you digging a hole? To which Calvin responds, I'm looking for buried treasure. Hobbes asks him, asks Calvin what he's found. And Calvin says, a few dirty rocks, a weird root, and some wonderfully disgusting grubs. Treasures, treasures, treasures everywhere. When you keep digging in this text, you keep finding more and more beautiful nuggets. And you can't read the story without constantly being reminded again and again of the story right before this in John 11. The story of Jesus raising Lazarus from the dead, a story where we see all three siblings and Jesus. Lazarus, Mary, Martha, and Jesus. And so I want to read a part of John 11 for you. When Mary came to where Jesus was and saw him, she knelt at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. And when Jesus saw her weeping, he was deeply moved, and Jesus began to weep. When they arrived at the tomb of Lazarus, Jesus said to take the stone away. But Martha replies, but Lord, there is already a great stench because he has been dead for four days. But when the stone had been rolled away, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. Notice here in John 11 that we find Mary kneeling at Jesus' feet. Mary is always found kneeling at Jesus' feet. And Martha is doing what Martha does best. She's a leader of sorts, responding as the responsible sister, reminding Jesus about the stench. And Lazarus is raised from the dead by Jesus. With these images in mind, what is the first thing the author wants us to know in the first verse of John 12, today's text? That Lazarus was raised from the dead. Lazarus is alive. It's as if John is saying, remember that guy who was raised from the dead? He's alive. He's really alive. He doesn't want us to forget it. In fact, he says he's so alive that he's eating. <laughs> That's pretty incredible. And if that isn't enough, we also find Martha, the responsible sister, serving the meal, feeding the hungry, who had gathered around Jesus. And where do we find Mary? Kneeling at Jesus' feet. And almost as if John doesn't want us to forget that previous story about the stench of death, we see here Mary pouring out fragrant perfume over Jesus' feet. And there are two important Hebrew rituals that involve anointing. The first is that anointing was used to commission a king. And the second, anointing was a ritual that took place when a body was prepared for burial. Could it be that Mary had purchased this expensive perfume for her own brother's burial? And now that he was alive, she lavishly pours it on Jesus' feet, anointing him as her Lord and as her king. And yet at the same time, Jesus recognizes that his kingship will come with the price of his own death. And so Mary is also preparing him for his burial. 
And as she pours out the perfume on Jesus' feet, the text says that the house was filled with the fragrance of perfume, which of course for me brings to mind Psalm 141. Let my prayer rise up as incense before you, the lifting up of my hands as an evening sacrifice. That beautiful hymn that we sing on Wednesday nights. Mary's act of anointing Jesus' feet was an act of worship for her Lord and her King. And while Judas considers her pouring out this expensive perfume a waste, an extravagant sacrifice, theologian Paul Tillich comments, isn't that exactly what God does for us? He writes, Luther's God who acts heroically and without rules. Is he not the extravagant or wasteful God who creates and destroys in order to create again and again and again? There is no creativity, divine or human, without the holy sacrifice which comes out of creative abundance of the heart. The cross is the most complete and most holy, extravagant sacrifice. The fulfillment of all wisdom in the plan of salvation. The, in, the Messiah, the anointed one, must pour himself out to become the Christ. Dr. Barbara Brown Taylor says, In Jesus Christ, the extravagance of God's love is made flesh. In him, the excessiveness of God's mercy was made manifest. Jesus was not held back to be admired. He opened himself to be poured out for the life of the world, to be poured out for you. In the season of Lent, we remember that death is always near. We begin the season remembering that we are dust, and to dust we shall return. And yet in this story, we are reminded that death does not have the final word. Lazarus, who is raised from the dead and dines with Jesus at the table, is a reminder of that promise. The perfume which replaces the stench of death is a reminder of that promise. The anointed body of Jesus is the ultimate reminder of that promise. Death does not have the last word. And finally, here in the presence of these three siblings, gathered together to celebrate new life, through Jesus Christ, gathered to worship, gathered to share a meal and feed the hungry, do we not find ourselves the body of Christ? Isn't this threefold image of dining and serving and worshiping the very image of the church who carries on the promise of the resurrection? And what a beautiful image it is. Siblings in Christ gathered together to celebrate new life. That's who we are. Here in the story where we find Lazarus, the one who died and was raised to new life, now dining around a meal that recalls Jesus' last supper where we find Martha, servant, leader, ever feeding those who are hungry, and where we find Mary, the one who pours out her heart in worship of her king. Together, all three siblings bear the marks of the church. We, who have been raised from the dead and called to feed the hungry, gathered to worship our Lord and King, our Savior, who died and rose for us and promises a celebration beyond celebrations. 
here in this place, we recall that meal with those siblings in Christ. We are Lazarus and Mary and Martha called to worship and eat and celebrate and feed the hungry. Rachel Held Evans, writing about her church community, once wrote these words. And when I read them, they remind me of these three siblings in Christ. They reminded me that Christianity isn't meant to be believed. It's meant to be lived and shared, eaten and spoken and enacted in the presence of other people. They reminded me that try as I may, I can't be a Christian on my own. I need a community. I need the church. There's someone else who always reminds me of the importance of my church community. That someone is Marge, and you might have a Marge in your own life. Marge was already in her 80s when I met her, and she was the church kitchen volunteer extraordinaire. Even in her 80s, she was serving up food. And she never missed a worship service. In fact, I can still see her sitting in her spot. And sadly, she had a surgery that put her in the nursing home, and each time I came to bring her Holy Communion and share with her, she would tell me that her greatest sadness was not being able to be in church with her church family. She would listen to our service on the radio, but she missed being there with her church family, celebrating that togetherness of new life. And we missed March. One day, knowing how badly that she wanted to attend our annual Even Song event, an Advent Even Song in the evening, two other women and I arranged to surprise her. We showed up at the nursing home and picked her up to bring her to the service. Then, after the service, we returned her to the nursing home, and it was late at night. And so we were trying to be very stealth and quiet so we wouldn't wake the other residents. When Marge commented, well, you broke me out, and now you're trying to sneak me back in? What gives? And we all broke down in the giggles. And from that time on, every single time I visited Marge, she would remind me about that time we broke her out, and she would giggle. Marge, when she gathered for worship with us that night, she didn't miss what it means to be broken out of the tomb and to celebrate new life. Made alive through Christ Jesus in our baptism, God continues to do a new thing and proclaim life as we gather together to worship at the feet of our Savior and Lord and share a meal. But this time, we are the ones who are anointed as Christ's beloveds. His extravagant blood is poured out for us and his body given for us that we may share Christ's love in the world with those who are hungry to be set free from the tomb, to discover treasures, treasures, treasures everywhere. Amen.
I invite you to stand. Let us confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Drawn close to the heart of God, we offer these prayers for the church, the world, and all who are in need. God, do a new thing in the church. Free us from paradigms that no longer serve the gospel and bring forward leaders who imagine fresh ways of doing ministry. Give us courage in the face of change. Merciful God. Do a new thing for creation. Reverse the directory, the trajectory of change and environmental catastrophe. Revive habitats already impaired by human disregard. Amplify the voices of climate scientists and researchers working to chart a new course. Merciful God. Do a new thing in our world. Break barriers that prevent political enemies from working together for the well-being of all. Make a way for peace and collaboration among the nations. Merciful God. Do a new thing for those who suffer. Reveal a path for any who are unemployed or underemployed, for those experiencing homelessness, and for all who struggle with money. Comfort those who grieve and restore those who are sick, especially those we name before you now, either in our hearts or out loud. Merciful God, do a new thing within us. Direct us into encounters that broaden our understanding of the human experience. Amplify voices that are ignored or devalued. Deliver us especially from the scourge of racism. Merciful God, do a new thing in our death. Fill us with the knowledge of Christ and the power of his resurrection as we give thanks for all the saints who have attained the prize of their heavenly call. Merciful God. Accept the prayers we bring, O God, on behalf of a world in need for the sake of Jesus Christ. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Please greet those near you with the sign of Christ's peace. Anna, you have an announcement. Would you come forward with your announcement? Good morning. I just wanted to let you know that student ministries are once again doing caramel rolls, and this year we're also going to offer frosted cinnamon rolls. Uh, We are doing a pre-order this year. That's just so that we don't have to make an excess of rolls if they're not going to be... um, purchased, eaten. Uh, So if you would like to pre-order rolls, I've got a clipboard out on one of the tables in the narthex. You're welcome to write down how many you would like, whether you would like caramel or frosted, um, and those will be available for pickup actually next Sunday on Palm Sunday. Thank you. Thank you, Anna. 
A few other announcements that need to be made today. Um, First, we are uh, looking to re-engage a little more with multiple readers, and you may have noticed there has been not really an usher as such at the 8.30 service, and we'd like to make sure there is someone here welcoming folks as they come in the door, guiding some of that process. So out in the narthex on that welcome desk, there are two sheets of paper. One says ushers, one says readers. We want to engage a few more folks and standing in this location as well. Uh, So if you are interested in either of those things, please just put your name on that list and we will make sure to start kind of creating a path forward for how to... um, how to increase participation. So readers and ushers sign up in the narthex. Pub Theology meets tonight. Uh, We gather at Post Dock in Redmond. We are still worshiping. This coming Wednesday is our last Wednesday in the season of Lent to worship with Hold an Evening Prayer, focusing on the Psalms, and then we will worship for Holy Week. Um, Both Palm Sunday and Easter, regular worship times of 8.30 and 10.45, But also don't forget Maundy Thursday at 7 and Good Friday at 7 as well. We will remember on Maundy Thursday God's mandate to love one another as I have loved you and the institution of the Lord's Supper. And on Friday we will gather to tell that story and remember that night, that night that begins a promise that death cannot hold us, death cannot destroy us, that it has been overcome. Uh, We are worshiping with communion this morning, and we are going to be making a slight change in the process. Um, When we started the way we were doing it last week, we were about 30, maybe 20 in the room at times. Now we are regularly over 50. And so we are going to have two columns of folks coming um, forward at the same time. And we are going to have them both come down the center aisle, Uh, And so the center aisles will empty first, come to the middle, come straight down. Pastor Nyla and I will be at the front serving bread. And just to our side will be someone with wine and or grape juice on the same tray. Uh, As you come down, there will be a sanitizer pump for you. Following that, there will be a tray that has a plate on it with gluten-free wafers. So if you want to commune with a gluten-free wafer, you are invited to take um, the wafer from that plate as you come forward. And if you want the bread, Pastor Nyla or I will hand that to you as well. Um, An encouragement, and this is written into the bulletin, but as you receive communion, we invite you uh, to come forward to receive a gift with hands open, with palms up as a way that that gift isn't something more than what God offers to place in your hand. So we encourage you to come forward that way. As you, as you leave, there will be a table or at least a stool with a basket going up both aisles for you to place your empty cup in as you return to your pew. So up the middle, return by the side aisle. Side, we invite you to come around the back and down the center aisle to come forward for communion. All right? I won't go through that again when it's time for communion, but we're going to do a lot of setup in the next three minutes here, so I want to be sure you're clear. One more note as we get ready for stewardship. I just, a couple months ago, I stood up here and I I talked about some concerns I had and some anxiety that was with me, and we talked about stewardship. And then Mary Sue got up here about almost a month ago, and she shared her thoughts and her joy of this place. And I want to begin with a word of thank you because people have, you have responded to that in a beautiful way. And that anxiety in my heart um, and within some of the council conversations has lessened because of that response. And I just want to acknowledge the value that not not just a single one-time kind of gift, but that continuing ongoing stewardship is what continues to make that possible. So thank you for your care. Thank you for your involvement and your intentional participation. And let us continue to worship God with our offering.
Please stand. Let us pray. God, our provider, you have not fed us with bread alone, but with words of grace and life. Bless us and these your gifts, which we receive from your bounty. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. God of resurrection and new life, pour out your Holy Spirit on us and on these gifts of bread and wine. Reveal yourself to us in the breaking of the bread. Raise us up as the body of Christ for the world. Breathe new life into us. Send us forth burning with justice, peace, and love. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom The power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. I invite you to be seated with just one quick reminder again. No, you can be seated while I remind you. It's okay. Um, We will begin, the center sections will commune first, and then the outside sections will follow in behind, just to make sure we're, with the minor changes, we got to be sure everyone is clear. Let us sing Lamb of God.
invite you to stand. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, which you have now received, strengthen you and keep you in God's grace now and always. Amen. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, strengthen your faith, increase your hope, deepen your love, and free you for service. Amen. Let us sing. Jesus meets you on the way. Thanks be to God.